so power supplies, the primary one, and we'll follow up in the next slide on secondary. Um, all fire alarm panels, probably obviously, must have a primary power supply. Uh, this is typically your power supply coming out of, say, out of the wall, but the building power supply. It's supplied by the local utility. Um, doesn't always have to be, and there are exceptions. I'll talk about it. Well, it's in section 10.6 of NFPA 72. Um, it's also addressed sometimes in the model codes, but your primary power supply, it's positioned on its own circuit within the building, and it's with a dedicated red lockable breaker or other indicating label so that the any responders, any maintenance personnel know that this breaker is a fire alarm, is a life safety dedicated circuit. Um, the code, I think it says, the circuit and the connections must be mechanically protected. You just can't have them free run anywhere. Um, Power can also be supplied through generators, like a primary and alternate solution, or another pro approved, AHJ approved, power generating method. Um, this is usually only applicable in those remote areas where you don't have actually have an electric grid. Um, generally, that's just it's just going to be more expensive to do something like that. There's no there's zero advantage really to do some to do something like that, especially if a secondary power supply is available. Um, but that is there's the allowance to do that. So, all, power, all fire alarm panels must have a primary power supply. They also must have a means for secondary power, and that power shall be supplied within 30 seconds of primary loss. Um, what that means is it's not necessarily um, emergency power, which must be supplied in 10 seconds, but it is a quicker than legally required power, which I believe is in 50 or 60 seconds. So generally, the power given is the emergency power circuit, um, or the emergency power considered the secondary power is typically actually derived from batteries. So these batteries are calculated to run the system, which you can see at the bottom of the slide. Uh, it's typically run the system for a certain amount of time. They're stored internally or adjacent to the main fire alarm panel. These are typically done by the, you know, we, we know how to calculate them as engineers, um, but it's typically done by a nice set fire alarm technician during the submittal phase um, to be verified, to have a certain amount of power available, to have a certain safety factor built in, um, and then the batteries are sized and placed. You can also power it from the generator. I think the looking in here, yes, the code actually does have a note in there that the battery calculations must include a minimum 20% safety margin above the calculated amp hour capacity required. So whatever is calculated, the code requires you to put in a safety margin. Um, that is 10.6 section 10.6.7.2. Um, how, high, how large do you need to size these things? Um, code has three different requirements. Um, the standard fire alarm system has to have 24 hours of standby load and five minutes of alarm. And by that I mean it's not one or the other. It means the system on the pond loss of power must be able to operate standby for 24 hours and then operate the alarm system for five minutes. And the reason there's two different loads is because the, the system has different demands depending whether it's operating or not. Your speaker strobe is going to have draw a lot more power flashing a light and buzzing a horn or saying or saying some words than it is just sitting there and sending a signal that it's okay back to the fire alarm panel. So that's the standby versus the alarm. Um, your voice alarm evac system is uh, 24 hours and 15 minutes and any mass notification system that's not necessarily classified voice alarm, um, usually they're synonymous, is also 24 and 15. Yes, and Alejandro, I, I agree. There's a lot of places. When you get into, um, we do a lot of work at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and they require 60 minutes of um, mass notification alarm. So it gets, it gets sizable. Yep, exactly, UFC. UFC really loves power on this, which I understand. But I think UFC is like 48 hours and 15 minutes, but don't. That's not that's not in the that's not in the test, so don't don't worry about those. This this is what's going to be on the test for the amount of battery backup power.